Oh, yeah. ASMR. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello, I'm Jen. My name's Rachel. Welcome to our channel. We are Whiskey Geeks. Not Whiskey Snobs. So if you like all things whiskey and you're not a snob, subscribe! If you've not watched part one yet, I've put a link to it here. It's all about the history of Lindor's Abbey and why it's considered the birthplace of Scotch whiskey. Here in part two, we're going for a tour of the distillery. We hope you enjoy. Uh, so we get our... Our barley comes from uh, just the, the fields across there. Um, so it's always been 100% Fife barley that we've used from the word go. Uh, but from the last year and a half, we've committed to our 100% local barley, which comes from mm. our two neighbouring farms. We'd have originally been part of the Abbey Estate. Um, so one of the farms is still owned by um, Drew's cousin, or one of the gentleman called Richard Black. So it's literally two farms that we get our barley from now, and mm -hmm. that is going the sensory aspect then. Thank you. Barley oh, there. It smells lovely. Oh. Not barley. We always think we should make this into like a bar snack. Oh, yeah. Sorry. ASMR. <laughs> yeah. yeah. ASMR. Yeah. So we use um, the, our original whiskey that's made with uh, concerto barley. Uh, we now use Moria. Oh. Um, I'm going to go upstairs to talk more about yeasts and things like that. So we're doing um, like coming into silent season right. for like sort of closing down for when I was growing up in the hospitality industry and stuff, being talked to about whiskey a lot, you were kind of always led to believe that 99% of the, the flavour profile of the whiskey is coming solely from the barrel. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think there's still probably quite a lot of that fake news, so to speak, totally. in the industry or with, with punters along the way. Sometimes they're putting a percentage to it, like 70% yeah. of the flavour. We used to always like, be told that Dean's in 70%. Yeah. How can you put a percentage yeah, on that? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, if you, for hopefully what you gather from when we're going around and then have a smell and taste of where you make some stuff, you'll find that before it even goes anywhere near a wooden barrel that it's got loads of texture, character, flavour mm -hmm. to it already. Um, and it's all very much important from everything that's happen happening from, from this point onwards. Yeah. Sure. So, yeah, looking for that clear one. Uh, but yeah, it gives you a, uh, an idea of the size of them. Yeah, yeah. So, so when, they're, when they're filled, they kind of feel something that they're just like from here up. Mm -hmm. It's a light, mm -hmm. kind of like when they're empty like this. Yeah. Pretty big. Uh, Pretty big vessel. Okay. Uh, so our we have some of the longest fermentation processes in the country. Uh, so we have when we're doing our distillation to do it with like three different fermentation, well two different fermentation times, two of 76 hours and one of 119 hours. Right. Okay. Um, so that gives us some like the, the long fermentation aspect to our spirit gives us some really ripe, juicy fruit notes. Yeah. So the, the, sh the slightly shorter ver uh, fermentations could give you a different kind of texture and character to it there. But the, when we have like the majority of our spirit coming in at 119 hours, it's um, it's really really fruit forward. Mm -hmm. uh, so right on the cusp of where it's starting to go a bit sour. Um, we don't want sour flavours, so we stop our fermentation right on that kind of nice line of where we're going to really ripe juicy fruit notes. Oh, is that something you experimented with, or did you have? Like, yeah, so it was. Like when we talk about Lindor's, um, we kind of quite often fall into the bracket of uh, Jim Swan distillery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we had uh, the late great Dr. Jim Swan as lead consultant on the build of Lindor's. He sadly passed away the day we had our stills put in. Oh, sadly. Mm. Um, yeah, this is the last distillery. So this is his last distillery he was working with for yeah. sure. Um, so we did have Jim Swan part of the kind of taking us into the stage of distilling and things like that at all. Um, so as much as you would maybe have on paper as an idea, the distillery will have its own ideas, its own characters. Um, Daddy, I got you. Do I have to smell? I'm not It's not too vibrant, I'm not sure. It's all right. What stage are we at here? Yeah. Yeah. So you can see it's not too frothy. Like mm -hmm. it's obviously the yeast is done 
a lot of its work. Yeah. It's still kind of fizzing a wee bit there, but um, it's not like at the start of it when the, the yeast is really active, the openness is almost like a whole more kind of kind of thing. That's when it's, it's really kind of. It's when I think it smells best. Yes. Yeah. It's really foamy. It is when it's foamy. So you've got like this little guy on top here as your skimmer, uh, yep. and that's there just to literally yep. stop the foam coming out of the room becoming a proper foam party, I guess. So. Yeah. We could, have, we could have put in like these. A lot of people have their washbacks now stainless steel. Uh, these are just our water containers, so these are right. washbacks here. Time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. <laughs> um, so this is our, our raw still. Uh, this is dodo. So traditionally stills would have names. Um, these are named after family members. So dodo is Drew's mum, Dorothy. Uh, no. but our, the grandkids and locals call her dodo. Oh, cool. So this is dodo and then we have uh, Poppy and G, um, which is Drew's, Drew and Helen's daughters. Um, as a twin sister spirit stills. So cool. our setup in here is, is very different to, to many in the sense that we have one wash still, we have two spirit stills. Um, they're not, it's not triple distillation, it's double distillation. They're getting fed from the same low ones in Bain's tank and we take the cut off both of these stills. Right. But what having two stills do, again, this was something that was like sort of we were introduced to by Jim Swan as a good idea for this type of spirit we were looking for. This allows us to do very gentle distillation. Mm -hmm. uh, it's giving you double the copper contact. So you're going to get a really nice light, like creamy um, spirit coming across the line arm. Yeah, yeah. So but again, just working with those really nice sort of fruity, fruity characters. I actually smell like melted chocolate. <laughs> smelling like a chocolatey it's smell. Like smell. Yeah, but, um, so yeah, so quite up, like when when it's it's not coming off this now, but when it's coming off the spirit stills, it's when it's coming through at this stage, it's very tropical. It's like um, pineapples and coconuts and mangoes Ooh. coming from this stage. It's getting yeah. to it from about nine percent the sort of beer wash here um, up to sort of mid twenties mm -hmm. here, but it's very very tropical at this point. And it goes into the low white tank over here when it's coming off the spirit stills. Um, when we're taking the cut, so at the minute they're they're just running back into the, the faints tank, low ends of faints tank, and then that gets comes back into the still until we're ready to take the kind of middles, like the the heart of the heart of the spirit. And when that's good to go, we'll turn these into the middle. We we'll take the cut off them both. On paper, they should have they should be identical, but they do have their own character. Yeah. So yeah. each individual one has a different unique uh, character style. Uh, but we do at the minute take them both, but there's nothing to say that in the future we couldn't do a single malt from Poppy and from G and, ah. have, and have two different single malts coming off, the, the, off each individual still because they should be exactly the same, they're exactly the same style, size, but whether it be that the one gets charged just slightly before the other one, but they do have a, a distinctive different character. Wow. Yeah. So. But you have a lot of smell of these. Yeah. so subtle, isn't it? The differences are so subtle what you have to do and then yeah. it's part of it. Smell of this. Mm. Well, don't need to go too deep because it'll be very yeah. high, high alcohol there. So mm. it was hover above the edge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're right in there. Spicy. <laughs> oh, yeah. It smells like a cake. Yeah. It does. I'm it smelling does. like it's cakes yeah. cooking or something. Like yeah. Yeah. over there as well. Like that smells like chocolate cake in the yeah. oven. Yeah. <laughs> it does. It does. So this is. So this is off the same still, but this will be like the, the start and the finish. So, so that that one's on the right. Oh, wow. so that's your finish. That's much freer, that one. Oh yeah. yeah so you can smell smell it, smell it together there. It's like the difference between the two. Yeah, yeah, like, definitely. That's quite like. Oh. Oh yeah, that's like spicier and yeah. cakier, and that's like more like what I would say of a normal yeah, like, like, like fruitier yeah. and like bananas and hair drops. Yeah. And then again, oh, this, this one here I'll have a, a different kind of Well... Run it hands. 
<laughs> oh, well, that's a lot more perfume than floral, I think, for me. Mmm. Yeah. Brady, more Brady. Yep. Yep. So like, are we at each side of the something to do is you know, having a, <clears throat> having the sort of like the, the start run, the end run of each one, kind of seeing those and then you kind of combine them all to, to kind of get like what our actual yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Silly, uh, sort of DNA character is. Ooh, accessible before it's even one of the cast. Yeah. We've got a little bit of funk that we want to have that give the cast something to play about with. But it's essentially a, a spirit that cast doesn't have to do too much with, so that come three, four years old, it's a nice, easy drinking whiskey. Was that the thought? Yeah, so that the, the, you need to release something quite yeah, so soon the, the, after the, opening. Yeah. For sure. Yes, yeah, so we wanted to have a new make style that will mature well over long periods of time, mm -hmm. but also something that it can be released at four, three, four, five years old that will sit shoulder to shoulder with something at seven, eight, nine, yeah. ten years old. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what the feedback has been from blind tastings across the world really is um, like what the coffee glasses now is there's a really really highly accoladed whiskey for, for its age um, it got uh, gold outstanding at the international wine and spirits competition with yeah. a big score of 98 out of 100 wow. uh, for, un for under 12s category mm -hmm. um, it was one of the highest scoring there and again for the san francisco awards it got a double gold medal um, which, like you know, people celebrate a bronze. Yeah, yeah. Like it's like yeah. A, like a really big deal, which it is. Mm -hmm. uh, to get a double gold in San Francisco for our first single malt release uh, is something that a lot of people would would dream of having, including yeah, yeah, yeah. ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we're just like very humbled by the fact that a three and a half year old whiskey can be thought of as a very good quality whiskey, right up to twelve year olds. Mm -hmm. so like, totally. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so the new make itself, um, in 2020 and 21, the World Whiskey Awards was awarded as the best quality new make in Scotland. Really? Wow. Yeah. So before we'd even released our first whiskey, the world was kind of seeing that our new make character was of very, very high quality. Yeah. So putting very high quality spirit into very good quality casks, giving a very high quality whiskey at a young age. We're having the core range just now. We've mm -hmm. just got a wee trot around the distillery, which was great. We didn't yeah. trot. Well, we did trot. We were very <laughs> happy. <laughs> um, and this one, so their core release, which is in bourbon, cherry, and ACR mm. casks. Mm -hmm. And it's lovely. It's fruity, quite orangey. Orangey, like peaches. Mm. Yep. And I find it's quite waxy, but not like the yeah. waxy like chemical, but like really like beeswax or something like that. It's thick. Thick, definitely thick. Thick, thick and fruity and juicy. Yep. I and mean, we had a wee smell of the new make as well. Which that was really smell. interesting, four yeah. different ones. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, and we are going to try more whiskies. <gasps> Thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoyed our video. If you did, please give it a like and a subscribe and you can follow us on social media at The Grail Tastings. Make sure you come back for part three where we'll be in the warehouse and the bottling hall having some samples. See you next time. Slange. So if you, if you ever find Gary having a bad day, he's probably down here poking the cat. <laughs> <laughs> Just like smelling it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, obviously. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Shh, don't you have a problem with that. We are being filmed. <laughs> <laughs>